<laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'm supposed to be here. <laughs> Thanks for showing up. Uh, in case you're wondering where Nate Smith is, he is flying. He is in the air today, so he will not be joining us. Uh, but that's okay. We've made plans. Uh, but I did want to make an announcement. Uh, um, next week, there will be no dice camera action game because it's hot on the heels of Memorial Day, and a bunch of us here at Wizards of the Coast are flying to L.A. to participate in a grand D&D event at Meltdown Comics. Uh, so um, this game will resume, hopefully, the week after uh, the Memorial Day week. June. Busy, busy June. June. Yes. June, why you do this? Right. And in other news, Holly just celebrated a birthday. Happy birthday, Holly. Thank you. Which if you didn't only... see Holly's cosplay as Strix. Oh, my gosh. My mind so was awesome. blown. <laughs> oh my I, got, I got inspired, and I only rolled around on the ground three times. So, there's, a, there's a bunch of like pictures my friend had her polaroid and every picture is every time i just like laid on the ground in a, and it just looks like a pile of rags <laughs> it's very accurate you, you guys would have appreciated it yeah. yeah and that's all sort of covered with worm guts so it's authentic yeah right. yeah, was yeah fine. exactly does it smell authentic too no actually it doesn't smell that it just smells like spray paint to be honest <laughs> oh. <laughs> All cosplay just kind of smells like spray paint. Yeah. <laughs> I like that the, the ruins on the end of your staff are sort of sloppy and distressed. Like, <laughs> yeah. like she was doing it while running through the street or something. <laughs> that was totally my idea is like, I figured that she wouldn't be that good at that. So I actually like, I watered down the paint just enough. So it just looked like it was kind of like splattered on there. <laughs> yeah, it was thought, it was thought out. I also had the heart. I had the, uh, the goat heart from the hag that I got. Oh, yeah. oh, really? I had all kinds of weird things from our game like hidden in it, but I don't have like very good pictures because number one, I was wow. extremely drunk. <laughs> and number two, eventually I want to do like proper photos with it, but you know, one You're day. Far, you are far more industrious while drunk than I am. I, that's, <laughs> it's a talent. <laughs> I was impressed you said that a lot of it was just already at your place. Oh, like it was, you yeah. Shop for it. It was. Jared seen my place. He's he can tell you that my place is some weird stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much. Yeah. It's a museum of costume antiquity. Yeah, there's a lot of weird bones and like things on like hanging antlers and like it's it's very strange. <laughs> All right. So uh, jumping into the story. Uh, in the town of Vallaki, the party ended up getting separated after Isaac Strozny tried to uh, basically uh, corner his sister, and Strix ran away into the rain, uh, leaving the rest of the party to contend with uh, Isaac and the Burgomaster. In the course of all that hullabaloo, Diath was uh, accused of killing a town guard and hauled off in shackles to the town square where he was thrown into the stocks and pelted with rocks by a bratty little snot-nosed kid. Um, and uh, when it looked like he might be released, uh, Isaac, grump that he is, uh, decided to have Dieth hanged from the gallows because he's just that kind of vindictive guy. And uh, I don't like without, that guy. Yeah. No. Without his friends to save him or help him get out of his shackles, uh, DF plunged through the trap door and then everything went black with a snap. So. All right, glad I could make it. See you guys later. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for showing up for the recap. Yeah. <laughs> uh, see you next season. Uh, so, um, DF, you are somewhat. Um, Dead? Disoriented. <laughs> no, all right. Uh, because you see yourself not uh, not what the not feeling the noose around your neck. Uh, uh, you are standing at the base of the gallows, looking up at yourself, hanging there. And while this is going on, hundreds. Or, First it's dozens, and then it's hundreds of ravens just sort of descend upon the town square and kind of flutter all around you and around your hanging self. And they begin to attack and frighten away the guards, the townsfolk, and pretty much everybody in the town square. It's just total chaos. And there you are looking up at yourself, hanging uh, from this contraption. Right. And as the 
as the chaos subsides and the birds chase the people away, a few of the birds kind of hang out on top of the gallows and seem to be looking down at you in your general directions or just sort of off to the side, but with that sort of crazy side eye glance that uh, <laughs> ravens are known to give. Like at me where I currently see yes, myself? Exactly. Okay. Um, now, as you are sort of looking at yourself, you don't see anything there. It's like you're just this disembodied consciousness. And it's only a few minutes after most of the townspeople have been scared away, with the exception of the donkey-headed ones locked in the stocks, uh, and the guards have been chased away by these irate ravens that you see uh, through the mist and rain uh, figures running toward the gallows. Uh, behind you. You sort of look over your non-existent shoulder uh, or you cast your glance in that direction and you can hear Evelyn and uh, calling out your name and she runs literally right through you and up onto the gallows and starts to try to pull your hanging corpse down off of uh, this contraption. Lift, lift and remove. Not <laughs> right. Lift about to make fun of you. Right. So, but here's the thing. Uh, Evie's not particularly tall and you're sort of, your body is sort of elevated. So she is struggling at first to get you up and off uh, to sort of unhook your snapped neck uh, from this, uh, from the noose. And then Paulton goes up to assist her by which time she's basically got you down lying on top of the gallows. Um, and as I said, the rain is still pouring down. Most of the ravens have cleared. You can also see Irina standing very close to you right now, but not paying any attention to you whatsoever. She's got her hands over her mouth and is just looking up distraught as your two companions cradle your dead corpse. And you can see Evelyn is swept up in some sort of prayer and there's almost something luminous about her in that moment. And the world seems to almost slow around you the rain starts to just sort of fall more slowly and everything kind of becomes suspended or slowing down. Uh, but you see Paulton uh, kind of staring up in, at the, the skies, uh, doing everything he can to console uh, Evelyn in this point in time. By now you've realized you're obviously not alive and you're obviously not gone to that far-flung afterlife that uh, so many of your um, elders told you as a kid would happen. Um, you seem to be trapped here in some sort of disembodied state. Well, shit. Yes. Um, so I don't even have like arms or anything. Like if I look down at my arms or whatever, it's just nothing there. There's nothing there. If I attempt to speak to see if I can even hear myself. You got nothing to speak with. This is a terrible existence. Yeah. And in fact, you can feel uh, the mist around you uh, almost feels soupy, like it's got substance, almost like tar. Um, in the mortal life, it wouldn't bother you at all. Mist is insubstantial. You just pass right through it. But for you, it seems to try to mire you, like trap you in this spot. Like it wants to bind you to this location forever. You can almost see misty, you can almost see misty claws around you trying to anchor you. Uh you don't relish the thought of being bound to this gallows for yeah. the rest of existence. Yeah. I shan't let it. I tried to approach my friends and just kind of almost like yeah. finding you my know, way. You know when you try to run in a dream? Yeah. You just can't do it. And you're just like dragging yeah. practically. That's what it feels like as you move your consciousness toward your friends. All right. But you are able to move. Okay. Whatever effort it takes. Yeah. Uh, I just try to get to them. Your, your will is so strong right now that uh, this mist can't hold you down. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> I got to find that kid. <laughs> <laughs> Revenge. All right. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll just try to 
reapproach my body and or my friends. Yep. You're able uh, to uh, get as close to them as you want to. Okay. And then I've seen this in a thousand Disney cartoons. I just take my consciousness and lay down in the exact pos- position of my body. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, when you do that, uh, you don't have um, any weird, you know, shivery experiences or anything. Uh, basically, it's like moving through a chair. Um, there's nothing there for you. There's nothing to grasp onto for your consciousness to grasp onto there. Um, it's uh, like you hit a wall um, almost uh, as, as you get close to her, almost like some sort of holy force field uh, that seems to uh, gird her against, you know, uh, maybe undead spirits or or something you're not sure. Uh, it could also be that in this particular time and moment, she is uttering a prayer, um, uh, quite a, um, a beautiful one. Um, and also uh, there is some barrier, like you hit a wall um, almost uh, as, as you get close to her, almost like some sort of holy force field uh, that seems to uh, gird her against, you know, uh, maybe undead spirits or or something. You're not sure. Uh, it could also be that in this particular time and moment, she is uttering a prayer. Um, uh, quite a um, a beautiful one. Um, and also, uh, you can see in her face that she's. Uh, dealing with the realization that you have not gone to the afterlife as she always assumed one would that your soul is sort oh. of forever trapped okay. in this domain that's okay so then she knows that i'm still here kind yes. of yes okay so that's kind of good news all things considered yeah <laughs> <laughs> Although she doesn't look particularly comforted in this moment. And in I fact, mean, I'm not either, but at this particular time, you can see she is picking you up and preparing to carry you away, carry you off. Oh, all right. And, and oh, by the way, uh, you can see uh, at this point in time, Strix comes screaming into the town square uh, through the rain and uh, uh, just is absolutely hysterical and at wit's end. Okay, so everything is normal. <laughs> and then she starts screaming at Evelyn uh, to take to take the body to the church. Church? Okay. Hmm. All right. So, and then uh, okay, I tried to make any kind of uh, contact with Strix because I feel like if, if anyone, if I'm buried from Evelyn, she's from different dimensions far beyond anything that I can possibly comprehend. So if anyone has a chance at this, it'd be Strix. So that I, with whatever might I can in this ethereal form, call out just for Strix, or uh, try to get onto her shoulder, or okay. shake her, anything. Oh, great. Uh, not shake her, but you know, I feel like I make some worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, you can see that she is so consumed with uh, just sort of screaming uh, hysteria uh, that you're not even sure she would she's barely aware of her surroundings. Is it? Uh, yeah. She she also looks somewhat um, a little bit more traumatized than you've ever seen her before. That's like something. she's just gone through a horrible, horrible ordeal or or witnessed some dreadful revelation. Uh, about the only one who uh, isn't totally swept up in the chaos, the only ones who are, aren't totally swept up in the chaos right now are Irina and Paulton. Paulton seems like he's recovering from a hangover. He seems <laughs> surprisingly chill. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Paulton doesn't surprise me because he doesn't take anything seriously ever. Yeah. Irina probably has seen enough death in her time that she's more used to it than others. Mm-hmm. Yes, that seems to be true. Yeah. She she seems to be a little a little bit more desensitized to this event, right? And, and Paulton is just desensitized by his uh, <laughs> the copious amounts of ale he has imbibed. Okay. Well, okay. 
Um, so yeah, you you sort of reach out to Strix. You think maybe under normal circumstances, she might be able to get a read on you, but not at present. Sorry, I was a little distraught. Yeah. <laughs> We'll just well, wait. You haven't seen Distraught yet. <laughs> oh. That comes later. Oh. Great. That's great. Goodbye, yeah. everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you had that lie down moment last week, remember? Yeah. When Evie had to talk you off the ground. I do remember that, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, so at this point, should I just kind of... I can attempt to reach out to Paulton or just haunt them <laughs> uh uh yeah you can attempt to reach out to paulton uh when you do uh you see that um his mind is not his sort of psyche and mind is not guarded at all uh and when you come into contact with him that you you suddenly realize uh that he is aware of you inside like oh like you've just reached out to his mind or his his spirit uh is there anything you want to do or say when you suddenly and you can see there's you feel him react to you coming into contact with him okay maybe not physically but even just spiritually yeah, yeah he you can actually see like there's a moment of he's like yeah okay while uh, while Evie and Strix are are um, are dealing with each other and their their <laughs> grief over your demise, uh, you can see uh, Paulton is just like looking at his hands and looking at the sky and saying, "What's happening to me?" This is weird. Right. And Arena is like touching him on the shoulder, and he just sort of shrugs her off because it's so um, unnerving. Like he's just got the willies. Ah, if I was a lesser person, this would be really funny. <laughs> <laughs> all right um but uh make an intelligence check all right i'd love to you there you are uh oh it's actually pretty good 20 oh wow okay while you seem to be a disembodied spirit you think that you can probably control paulton or other characters like him like a <laughs> <laughs> This is what right. you get when you're flying during the show. <laughs> and so, uh, like, you can get him to scratch himself. And... Oh, God. Uh, that, that's okay. <laughs> Be a lesser person. Be yeah. A the, lesser other thing, person. the other thing that occurs to you is uh, as you're just kind of acquainting yourself with being inside his, his, his mind, you, can, you think you can actually maybe even shut him down uh, and kind of just sort of take, take him over completely. Uh, right. Well, the last thing maybe, I ever wanted to know was how Paulton's mind works. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. But, so you're you're kind of dealing with this and kind of hiding out in Paulton and uh, sort of figuring out what you can do. Uh, what happens next is the retinue goes to the church in Va uh, Valaki. Uh, Strix and Evelyn barge in to the church with DF and. Uh, basically corner the priest there who tells them this story about uh, this abbot who uh, lives and works in a monastery at the edge of Strahd's domain overlooking a village called Kresk. The abbot had heard a rumor, or sorry, uh, the, this priest, uh, Lucian Petrovich, had heard a rumor that this abbot had brought somebody back from the dead. And recently, uh, to wit, uh, Evelyn and Strix quickly, uh, feeling like time is of the essence, leave as quickly as they blow into the church. They blow out of the church with you. They throw you on the back of a horse wrapped in a sack, uh, wrapped in blankets and tied with rope. And they ride, 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 ride off to the edge of town. Aww. And you're, you're still figuring, you're still in Paulton at this point, kind of figuring things out. Yeah. You know, like sticking his finger up his nose and... <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that they actually felt a sense of urgency in, in trying to make this right. Yeah, absolutely. They seem to be, uh, they seem to have thrown caution to the wind and have nothing on their mind except getting you to Kresk as quickly as possible to bring you back from the dead. All right. Paul's and then, 
yeah. people hung over and stuff. Uh, I'm sorry, you go ahead. No, I, uh, okay. so you're you're uh, riding on the back of Walter behind Strix. Uh, Walter, Walter is your horse. Oh, well, Walter. Uh, and uh, you get to the uh, gates, and there are two female guards, two women guards uh, protecting the gates. And you can hear Paulton. He's like talking to this woman, but at the same time, he's talking to you and saying, this can't be real. You're not real. You're not in my head. This is all, this is just trauma. I'm in shock. And he's trying to have, he's trying to deal with you. What he thinks is maybe something has gotten into him like you maybe you affected him more than he thought like you were a better friend than he could have ever imagined and somehow he can't get you out of his head he's trying to figure out what's wrong with him physically while he's talking to this woman and he's blubbering he's like blah 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 trying to convince these women to let your party out the gates at the same time he seems to be in great distress um, because he's not feeling normal with you inside him but okay. he does seem to persuade these women to let them out okay Wow. And then w once you get outside, uh, the party has a moment where they're sort of pulled in two different directions. They hear what appears to be a gypsy camp uh, situated on a hill outside town, and they sort of go off in that direction for a bit. And that's where Strix has her hissy fit and throws herself down on the ground and refuses to move. And Evelyn has to talk her up. Uh, and then when they go... Um, they see, uh, they get pretty close to the Vistani camp, and then after talking to an elf uh, standing at the base of the hill, they decide they haven't got time to waste on this. They're going to come back later. Uh, you weren't paying much attention to their conversation, except that apparently the Vistani are, have their own problems right now. Uh, a little girl, um, a Vistani girl seems to have gone missing, and everybody's out looking for her. But that's a problem that the party puts aside, and they continue to head off to Kresk to try to bring you back from the dead. By this point, you have realized you are in complete control of Paulton. All right. She's mine now. <laughs> are, we on, are we on the horses? Yes. Okay. Strix? Evelyn? This is Paulton talking to you now. Yes, Paulton. Hello. Hello. Since <laughs> like thirty seconds ago, <laughs> I just love greeting each other all the time. It's fun. Don't listen to him. He's just drunk again. No, Strix. No, I'm not drunk. Listen oh, to me. Oh, sure. Listen. This oh. is DF. Oh, all right. Wow, now that is not funny, Paulton. That's too. There soon. is a line, and you have crossed it. There are no jokes here. I, I. Uh, uh, Strix, remember when I found you in Daggerford? When you were alone and lost? Who oh, brought you food? Dalton. You just heard us talking about that one night and you listened to it and now you're just drunk and telling to hurt my feelings. Ah, son of a bitch. All right. Dalton, I know it's real hard to let go of a friend, but I think that just trying to bring him back this way is not the most kind thing to us or to yourself. He didn't even care earlier. Strix is like crying in her hair. <laughs> and as this is going on, you're riding the horses westward, uh, further further away um, to the edge of Strahd's domain, and you're you get to a crossroads, and there's like this sign post that's been sheared in half, and Evelyn finds the top half of the sign and figures out which direction you have to go, uh, going in the direction of Kresk and the Abbey of Saint Markovia, and also the Wizard of Wines Winery, which is also in that direction, and you're having these conversations as you're carrying on. Uh, considering that my mind is inside the notebook that I left at the office that normally has my notes in it, uh, <laughs> <laughs> could you remind me, or Strix, what was the name of, uh, the person we needed to see at the winery? We needed to do that secondarily for the, for the hotel. They wanted us to check on something. Oh, Yeah. But hold on. Strix has a book with all of her things written in it as well because she's not very smart. <laughs> and then also, who was the person that was going to bring DF back to life? <laughs> uh, that would be the abbot. The abbot right. Uh, right. in the Abbey of St. Markovia. Right. Yeah. Of course. And uh, you guys heard uh, that uh, the Abbey was a bastion of good uh, back in the ancient days. Uh, and uh, but now it's been turned into some sort of madhouse. Okay. 
Uh, now, the, the individual who uh, is at the Wizard of Wines, uh, as you recall, um, at the Blue Water Inn in uh, Velaki is run by a couple. Their names are Irwin and Danica Martikoff. The, the Wizard of Wines winery is owned by their extended family. Uh, the Martikoff clan also owns the winery and shipments from the winery have stopped. So now the inn is, its wine supply is dangerously low. So they asked you to speak to uh, a family member of theirs named Davian Martikoff, who runs the winery. Roger that. Danica referred to him as the old bird. Aww. <laughs> I wonder if he really is an old bird. I hope he's a wazard. <laughs> of Wan? A mm-hmm. wazard of Wan? Of Wan. The wazard of Wan. Uh, so, uh, your initial attempts to persuade your traveling companions, <laughs> uh, uh, which includes Irina, by the way, she did join you. And right? the, wolf, the right? wolf hunter guys, too. Right? Yes, and you have two uh, local wolf hunters from oh. uh, Velaki who are walking on foot alongside you, and their names are Soldar and Yevgeny. They're not brilliant conversationalists. They <laughs> basically have a very minimalist uh, vocabulary. Uh, but they are, they are sort of protecting you, and they do periodically express surprise that you haven't encountered any wolves on your way to Presque. That's highly unlikely out here in the wilderness. I guess it just means you're real good wolf hunters. They're just real afraid of you, huh? They, they, they give worrisome glances into the deep, deep woods. <laughs> but yes, your initial attempts to persuade your friends did not meet with stunning success. <laughs> All right. Uh, Evelyn, do you recall how we met? Everyone accused me of, of thievery and simple theft, but you knew me better than that. You knew I never did that, and you're the only one who defended me and got me out of that. That was long before we even met Paulton. Paulton, why don't you just stop talking in third person and play us a song? Oh, <laughs> you're making me cry remembering these things about Dia. He was just a real sweet man. I did see that good in him. I just- he was the bagpipes. They're my favorite. Bagpipes are stupid. I don't even know how to play them. I mean, wait, that's wait, 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 wait. Paulton says like bagpipes are stupid? Maybe you aren't, Paulton. Strix, look inside him or something with your look pants inside. or something or I don't have those abilities. Well. What do you think I am? You could try. Soldar's just like, use knife. Use knife. <laughs> <laughs> Not that way, Soldar. Good joke, though. You know what? Gladly. Soldar, could you hand me a dagger for a moment? He does. All right. And with that... You see, it's, I, got, it's got a cruel serrated edge, not only for uh, shearing off wolf hide, but also cutting through wolf bone. Yeah. All right. And I, I definitely... Doing that Thatcher's dagger. All right. It's... All right. I take the dagger and definitely uh, twirl it and move it uh, within my fingertips and my hand before throwing it in a nearby tree and just dead-eyeing it right into a narrow branch. Does All right. he dead-eye it? Uh, make, make a dexterity check using uh, Paulton's. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, <no. Dexterity. laughs> uh, okay. So he gets a uh, plus two to the roll. <laughs> Eat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you, you see him sort of fumble with the blade. Uh, <laughs> Very I mean, his, his fingers are chunky and calloused. It's weird. Yeah. It's not the most balanced blade to begin with. Normally, Dieth would probably be able to muster it, but uh, yeah, yeah like, Paulton's a little bit uh, ham-handed, and the blade, <laughs> you just sort of throw it off into the weeds, and Soldar gives you this horrible <laughs> look. Oh, I'll go get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You, you hop down off the horse and uh, go, go searching through the weeds to find it. Uh, uh, it's okay, Paul. You have other skills. Make a uh, intelligent or a wisdom perception check using your DF, your um, okay perception. So my perception. Yeah, okay, I can do that. It's just like yeah, like sleeping with people. All right. See, when it becomes a DF's abilities, I get yeah. a natural twenty. All right, <laughs> so, twenty-six. So you you find it easily. Yeah. Um, you also uh, find something else that happens to be nearby. 
as you pick up the dagger and turn, you sort of do a double take and realize, oh, you uh, just noticed something off the trail a little bit. And, uh, whoops, I'm looking at the wrong place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There it is. Uh, you can see what appears to be a corpse. Uh, and it is uh, the uh, appears to be some sort of peasant who has clearly been torn to pieces by wolves. Oh. Okay. I tried to halt our caravan and get them to wave it over, especially the hunters, because I feel like yeah. they have the best idea about, about this. Yes. Uh, when they walk over, it takes uh, Yevgeny and Zoldar all of three seconds to determine that uh, this peasant person, uh, who looks like a woman, was torn apart by one or two dire wolves. And given the way, uh, uh, given, given the state of the body, it looks like that she's been dead for about three days. Does she look familiar to anyone? I say out loud. Uh, uh, neither Yevgeny nor Zolda recognize her. Right. Um, but given, uh, given that uh, there are sort of the remains of what appear to be a fur, uh, a fur mantle that she was wearing, uh, that dress is more uh, typical of what somebody from Kresk would wear than what somebody from Velaki would wear. All right. Uh, a quick search of the body, uh, reveal that help us find any sort of clues or anything of note. <laughs> With your chunky fingers. <laughs> My uh, callous, chunky fingers. Yes. We're uh, seeing you, this too, right, Chris? Uh, yeah, once, once uh, uh, Paulton has uh, sort of identified the corpse, it's easy for you to see from the horses. You wouldn't have seen it ha if you were just casually trotting past, but it's pretty clear. Does it look anything like the description of the girl that was missing from the village? Uh, no, this this woman is older. Like this woman was in her forties. Um, the girl who was missing was under ten. Uh, I say a, a blessing prayer for her. And uh, make a uh, a wisdom perception check, DF, using your own perception to see if you find anything of value. Sure thing. Or or to determine that there's nothing of value. Uh, Thirteen. Okay, uh, you are pretty sure that this woman had literally nothing but her clothes on her back. Oh, all right. This could be a bad sign. Good thing we bought wolf hunters. I don't know if it's the wolves. Why would she even be out here? Oh, and with your 13, you can also see uh, where the wolves went after mauling her. They sort of darted back into the forest. Uh, you can also see a second set of human tracks in the area like she wasn't alone you know sometimes in life you're on a path and it's taking you somewhere it's going to help you resurrect your friend and then so many other paths present themselves just trying to take you off track doing good things but i i don't know i'm torn because that person whoever's in the woods is going to need some help and we have some wolf hunters with us but i have a corpse burrito on the back of my horse right now i need to turn it back into a live friend if you know what i mean I agree wholeheartedly. Am I able to discern uh, what where the other set of foot, footprints went to into the forest? Or yeah, it looks like um, you're able to that at one point as the wolves sprang, the second individual uh, ran off sort of across the road into the woods to the north. Now, curiously, it looks like that after mauling the woman, the wolves did not pursue. Hmm. Maybe they were full. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense to me. <laughs> After I've eaten one yeah, burrito, I don't pursue a right. second burrito. And act actually, it doesn't look like the wolves ate the woman. They just killed her. Oh. Oh. What a waste. Uh, both Yevgeny and Zoldar uh, tell you that uh, these are not unusual. Uh, the wolves, they are servants of the devil's strad. 
If he wanted her dead, they would have killed her on his command. Is everyone around here servants of the devil, Strahd? Yes, Evelyn. Oh. Yes. This, this is his land. I mean, maybe by certain standards, but I know that all lands belong to our mourning lord. <laughs> all praise be to Lathander. Strix tur- turns to Soldar and gives says she's a little addle cove, you know, she's too much to hit yeah, in the head Strix? too hard. Yeah, they, they agree with you. Okay, good. <laughs> Give each other knowing glances. <laughs> uh, so not wanting to be uh, distracted by this when you have important friends to bring back from the dead, uh, you uh, continue on your way to Kresk. And uh, just to recap where we actually left off last week, uh, you guys got to a point in the road uh, where the woods clear away. The road continues on to the edge of Strahd's domain and what appears about a mile and a half away to be a gigantic wall of impenetrable mist. But... Uh, you see a split, a branch in the road that goes up uh, the spur of this mountain, and it sort of uh, uh, hairpin turns up this spur until it gets to a walled community, a community surrounded by a 20-foot-high uh, stone wall, and there's a gatehouse with two um, uh, squat towers uh, flanking the gates. Uh, also made of stone, the same stone as the surrounding wall, in fact. And beyond these gates, you see trees and what appears to be chimney smoke rising from what might be cabins or houses or something you can't see because you're on low ground looking up at this wall in this community on this mountain spur. And then higher than even this village, this walled village, uh, you can see the cliffs take a sharp, steep turn upward and perched like some sort of uh, gargoyle-ish edifice above this tiny village is this uh, monastery, this walled fortress. Um, And you hear a bell ringing within it. And it's not a a cold and distant bell, but sort of a warm and inviting bell. (gasps) Do you hear that warm and inviting bell? (laughs) (laughs) It beckons us. I bet that's where they're going to bring our good friend Diaz back to life. Let's go. More importantly, I'd rather not be out in the wilderness or on the roads where we have, frankly, fresh meat. Are you worried about something, Paulton? (laughs) It does seem uncharacteristic of you. Yeah, I had a change of heart. (laughs) That's... Well, don't change it too much, because I sure love your heart just the way it is, Paulton. Oh, boy. This oh. is why he drinks. <laughs> <laughs> so the air grows colder as you approach the walled settlement. Um, the two square towers with peaked roofs, uh, they have narrow little open windows that uh, sort of stare down in your direction. Um, you can see uh, between them is a 12-foot tall iron-bound wooden doors and carved into the archway above the doors is a name, Kresk, K-R-E-Z-K. We made it. This is where we wanted to be, right? Yeah. Atop the parapet of the wall, you see four figures wearing fur hats and clutching spears. They watch you nervously. They're human. They appear to be archers. Strix pulls up her head and is like, Colton, this is where you convince them to love us. I hope they're women. (laughs) <laughs> uh i'm sorry I wave. hi hello friends oh it's too late <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, so you ride your horses up to the gate the gatehouse um uh these guards don't respond right away actually uh one of them kind of raises a wavy hand to you and the other one kind of <laughs> <laughs> slaps it down <laughs> and uh, you hear a voice on the wall say what you want I look at Paul. T- I start to say something, and then I'm like, "Oh, Paulton, you go ahead." Uh, <laughs> uh, we are here to make a, a donation to the monastery and seek aid. I kind of look at him like, <laughs> "Is it just me, or has it gotten worse?" <laughs> yeah, monastery is closed. Oh, what are its business hours? <laughs> Business hours? 
No one goes to monastery. It is a very bad place. I, seeing that this is not going well, I kind of like, like in a in an ange- as angelic of a gesture as I can, I like raise myself above my horse using my flying boots, <laughs> like outstretch my hands, and I say, "People of Kresk, we are, <laughs> we are here because our friend." is in dire need of your assistance. And we are on a holy mission of the morning Lord here to free you from this darkness. But we must start with the healing of our friend. Please allow us to pass so that we might fill this town with light. All right. Make a charisma persuasion check. And uh, I'm going to give you advantage on the roll. Nice. Okay. So we've got persuasion oh wow my persuasion is dang good why is it so good because you have a high charisma you're so fabulous wow okay well that's a 19 then excellent uh so uh one of the figures on the wall says it is saint markovia returned to save us oh great (laughs) (laughs) Uh, and uh, you hear him shout out that's me let them in let them in right now Ah, oh, yes, it's St. Buttander. Come to save everyone in the monastery. I, as, I, as I enter, I, like, have arms outstretched. I'm still hovering, like, leading Valentina and, like, nodding benevolently at everyone. Yeah. Like, All right. Yes, uh, yes, when the, when the gates finally part, when they pull open, uh, you can see uh, a mist-shrouded village beyond the wall. Um, but it's nothing really more than a scattering of humble wooden cottages along dirt roads that stretch between stands of snow-dusted pine trees. So many trees, in fact, as to constitute a small forest. Uh, to the north, you see gray cliffs rise sharply behind the village with a road winding up to the abbey, um, easy to see from this vantage. Now, uh, one of the closest buildings to you has uh, a big chimney on the side that's sort of billowing white smoke. And it seems to be of all of the residences tucked in this small little burg, the, the largest and most austere. Um, and the one of the guards who open, pulls open the gate, who's just uh, smiling, um, this, this silly ass smile. She's like, we have waited lifetimes for you to return to save us. This is a great day for Kresk a day of hopeful futures and, 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 and thank you. Thank you all for coming. We have prayed for this day. I go up to her and I say, just throwing oil on the fire. Bless you, my sister. And I, I kiss her on each cheek and then like do a, like, may the morning Lord bless you and shine upon you in all the days of your life. One of the other, the other guard, he says, did you bring any wine perchance? Yeah, I wish. We're out of wine. Unfortunately, the morning Lord has not blessed us with uh, such libations at this time. But after we resurrect our friend from the dead, we'll try to look into the wine situation. We've had a few requests for that. Uh, and uh, when you when you say that, the guard says, "Yes, yes, the the abbot he he brought the burgomaster's son back from the dead." So we've heard, and we're hoping he might help us out with that as well. The burgermaster of, of here, right? Not the. Okay, yes. good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, when when he when he says that, you see the the guards, uh, um, uh, sort of they become a little bit more somber and morose, and uh, uh, the the woman the the lady guard who's all sort of was thrilled a moment ago to see you, Evelyn. She says to you very quietly, "The burgermaster had his throat slashed." Wait, what? The the abbot. He had the abbot's throat slashed? No. He had his son's throat slashed? Uh, uh, no, no, sorry. I, I'm not explaining very well. The The abbot raised the burgomaster's son who died of sickness. Oh. And then the burgomaster's son, something something went horribly awry. And uh, a few nights ago, took a knife and slashed his father's throat. While so he slept. The burgomaster's son slashed the burgomaster's throat? That's right, yes. You know, it's hard well, for you to understand. Why did he go and do that? Some people are evil. They're evil. And uh, she says, I don't think he came back right. 
Well, then it doesn't seem like this abbot is doing his job perfectly well. But I don't know who else we're going to get to bring him back to life. What do you think, Strix? One of the other guards says, the abbot is mad. I have concerns. <laughs> what is it, Paulton? <laughs> Fine. Look, if he came back to life and he wasn't right, who's to say that whatever we do with Diath, me, myself, Diath, whatever, that we bring me, me him back, who knows if he's going to be okay? I'm worried about you that don't as know well. That. that this place is cursed. There's cursed people everywhere. Coming back as cursed sounds like what is going to happen unless we take some precautions. Can I do any kind of like religion check to see if I understand what might cause this or anything we should do about it? Absolutely. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, 21. Um, based on all of the, any sort of literature you've read about uh, Ray's dead and stuff like that, um, you're not aware of any um, uh, consequences. The, the, the spell Ray's dead, uh, which is um, sort of the lowest level spell that can bring back anybody who's been dead for a a certain period of time uh, doesn't have any dire consequences. You come back a little bit uh, famished and uh, weak, but you gain your strength back and you're just perfectly normal like nothing ever happened. So this is something weird and different and strange. Uh, you can see the guard also tells you that the burgomaster's wife has taken over leadership of the city while she tends to her, her husband, who is still alive, uh, but he's had all of his vocal cords cut and a very nasty scar. <laughs> they, had to tie, they had to tie their son up, yeah. but another woman from town let him go, and they fled together in the night. Who was this woman? Uh, she was a local peasant woman who f was very fond of the boy growing up. Oh, no. Oh, How many days no. ago would you say this happened? About three. Uh, oh, no. oh, oh dear. Well, Considering the wolves didn't kill him, that means that he was allied with Strahd. I'm telling this to everyone very factually. <laughs> when, when you say Strahd, all the guards, they just start to make this sort of religious gesture of, of forbiddance. <laughs> I mean, um, like, stinky pooper, simply, simply, not Strahd. And they're, they're like stinky looking over their pooper. shoulders. There's a sudden nervousness that grips the, the these guards surrounding you. Um, His name's Stinky Pooper now, Mr. Stinky Pooper. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's fine. Even to uh, then one of the guards says, uh, we do not evoke the devil's name here for it may summon him to our presence and he'll kill us all. Right, right. So we're going to use Stinky Pooper now. So Mr. Stinky Pooper let the guy go, which means that there, whatever this abbot did to him caused him to become somewhat allied with Strahd. I mean, that's my guess. Being that we've been here for a while, I'm just starting to assume that everyone is part of this whole Strahd business. I mean, Sticky Boober, and everything is fine. <laughs> we just have to watch out. We should definitely go talk to the Burgermaster's wife before we talk to the abbot, though. The Burgermaster's wife is back from whence we came, correct? Oh, this is the different Burgermaster. This is oh. the... Oh, yeah. Thanks, oh, John. This is the Crest each, Burgomaster. Exactly. Yeah. Each, each villager settlement has its own Burgomaster. Um, the one, the Burgomaster of this settlement had his throat slashed by his son, and now his uh, wife has taken over the mantle of Burgomaster pending his recovery. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, they tell her, they tell you that uh, the, the, the wife's name is Anna Kreskova. Uh, she's what a, a very, lovely name. Yeah. She's a very kind woman, and she just lives in that big house right over there. Well, perhaps we should pay her a visit before we talk to the app as much as i'd like to get this done as soon as possible and as much as df is not getting any fresher let me tell you probably should talk to her first yeah so um all the crestgites that you've met so far have been very friendly although naturally suspicious and terrified of life here um you can see they tend to be they tend they dress more warmly because their uh homes are elevated up the mountainside uh you can see dusting of snow on stuff uh they wear more furs and sort of embroidered or, or sorry sewn into their uh brocade garments uh and uh uh, you can see them. The men have sort of wild, bushy beards, and the women have longer hair. 
Um, they're, they're less fancy than the people who live in Velaki. Uh, they sort of live more simple peasant styles. And then uh, uh, you also, uh, when you go to the Burgomaster's house, uh, you meet Anna Kreskov. Does anybody hear a blinking sound? A Do blinking sound? Blinking? I hear a blinking sound. Do you guys hear that? Like a bling, bling, oh. bling. Okay, never mind. Maybe there's a bomb about to go off. In your <laughs> well, that's comforting. You might, might want to get uh, that checked. <laughs> uh, when, when you meet uh, Anna, uh, you can see that she's a very warm person, uh, despite it uh, looks like she's had, obviously, a very difficult life. And you can see that she has got her husband propped up in a bed. The, the house that they live in is basically one large room with some um, sort of... Uh, just sort of furniture everywhere. Uh, so you can see him lying in bed. His throat is all wrapped up in gauze and bandages. And uh, she seems to be doting on him while at the same time cooking dinner, uh, cleaning up the place and pretty much keeping all of the affairs of town in order. You can see there's a young woman sitting at a table uh, who seems to be uh, uh, taking instructions um, from Anna about uh, something to do with a a pregnancy and a newborn about to be born in town. Uh, and Anna seems to be managing that situation as well. They're expecting a baby hmm. very, very soon. Uh, greetings. Yeah. Virgo mistress, Anna, you have quite a lovely name. I think it just rings of, you know, quality and, and beauty. And I think you're probably just a very nice person, but I'm Evelyn. It's a strict she says can I offer you some pig or chicken? Uh, I guess so. Sure. Thanks. <laughs> she'll put out, she'll put out some plates uh, and she's uh, she puts out some provisions and food for you. Uh, she says, I would offer you wine, but we have none. Our supply from the wizard of wines winery has not arrived in months. Yeah, that's uh, uh, that's on our radar. Uh, it's a concern of ours. We are uh, humble adventurers, and we are here uh, in order to hopefully visit the abbot, as we've heard that he might be able to help us with a little uh, death of a friend situation that we've got going on. And uh, the one thing, we were going to look into that afterwards, but we were wondering, because we came in, and we, we told the people we were going to go talk to the abbot, but they told us that maybe there might be some concerns with the manner in which he brings people back to life so uh they told us to talk to you about that uh you can see that sort of upsets the burgomaster who's uh semi-conscious in bed and he just sort of makes this <gasps> sound uh but uh anna says my husband and i have oh, well, we lost all of our children uh the last of the four Ilya, died of an illness seven days ago he was 14 uh the Abbot came down from the abbey for the first time in years, like he knew that our son had died, even though I don't know how he could have possibly known. And he offered to bring him back from the dead, and he did. He took our son up to the abbey and the next day brought him back down alive. We were overjoyed. And that night, while we slept, Ilya took the kitchen knife over there and cut my husband's throat. The guards captured him before he could escape, and we tied him down, and we tried to find out what was wrong, but he was, he was insane. He was mad. He was like an animal. It was so sudden. He wasn't like that when he came down from the abbey at first. He was, he was, he was our son returned to us, quiet, beautiful Ilya. And then in the night, he just transformed into this beast, and then the next day, we found only the ropes. Uh, he had been freed. And then he was gone from us again. Well, it sure does sound like maybe there's some fishy business going on with the abbot. Do you know anything more about him? Oh, yes. Um, she says, I was reticent at first uh, to embrace the abbot's help. Uh, he sa she says, um, the, this, we don't know his real name. He arrived before I was born. Um, uh, we think it might've been over a century ago. 
um, and hasn't aged a day since. He occasionally, um, maybe once in a lifetime, uh, comes down. Uh, the last recorded, before he came down and offered to bring our son back from the dead, the last recorded visit uh, of him to the village was uh, he came down to visit the Shrine of the White Sun, which is here in, ta here in the village, uh, north of, uh, at the north end of the, of the community. Um, he, no one knows his true name or where he came from. Uh, there are many of us now who believe that he is Strahd's servant or the vampire himself in disguise. Do I, when she says Shrine of the White Sun, does that mean anything to me? Uh, make a religion check. I turn to Evelyn and go, I think this guy's a vampire. I'm mean, inclined uh, to agree about the uh, working for Strahd part. Uh, 16. Uh, yes, it is. It is an ancient uh, term, hardly used much at all in the religion of Lathander, uh, but it is an old term to refer to the Morning Lord. Nice, Lathander the White Sun. Okay, S U N. And uh, um, because he's so pure, and his radiance is so blinding. Right, of course. All hell uh, she tells you. <laughs> Anna tells you that the abbey was once a hospital and a convent, but it fell on hard times after the land was swallowed up by the mists. Uh, some of the clergy fell prey to Strahd, while others went mad and either starved themselves to death or turned to cannibalism. Um, but the abbey comes from a good place. Um, uh, uh, it's named after a priest of the Morning Lord who took a stand against the devil Strahd. After a fierce uprising, Markovia and her most loyal followers stormed Castle Ravenloft, only to be destroyed. Well, it certainly does warm my heart to know that he came down to worship at a place of the Morning Lord, and that does make me feel a little bit more comfortable about perhaps seeing him and uh, having him bring Dieth back from the dead. Oh, we should absolutely not have him bring Dieth back from the dead. I think the Abbey might hold some secrets for us, but that, that abbot himself might be some bad... News. Well, are yeah. you going to bring Dieth back from the dead, Strix? You're the one who could do that stuff. I mean, I checked and I don't think I can. Look, I no, I agree with Strix. That man must not be involved. It's too many uh, strange coincidences or strange happenings. Well, you, I just Paul. don't see the alternative. I mean, Strix was rolling on the ground yelling at me to find someone to bring him back to life, and now she's saying that I shouldn't do it. I mean, either we don't bring him back to life, or we try to get the person to help us bring him back to life. And I mean, if he hasn't aged, Evil, and you know what that means. I mean, Strix, I didn't want to get this pragmatic with you, but listen, <laughs> if we bring him back to life and it turns out he's an evil vampire and we have to kill him again, then I mean, we didn't lose anything. Well, well, come on I now. I don't think that's how that works. <laughs> at least his soul maybe could pass on at that point and move into the light. Pretty sure vampires are just kind of evil and go to the evil place when they get killed. But that wouldn't be Dia. That would just would be rather a not be a vampire. mortal body. Look, Paulton saying Dia would rather not be a vampire. <laughs> what does Paulton know about Dia? <laughs> <laughs> Anna will tell you that no one from the village visits the abbey anymore. Mostly uh, the bell rings at odd times, day and night, and the place is filled with baleful screams and horrible inhuman laughter. Oh, uh, yeah. It sounds great. Well, maybe we need to go clean it up then. Mm. That's more like it. Let's go. God, I hate After you. After I eat this pork. <laughs> yeah, you clean off your plates. It's all good food. It's a little bit cold. It's been sitting around for a bit, but it's tasty. Certainly the tastiest thing you've had last couple of days. Strix will eat some and then wrap some in some cloth and stick it in a robe. Yep. Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> There's a loaf of bread you can hawk too. Oh good. She does that too. Just yep. sticks it. <laughs> so uh, unfortunately Anna doesn't know what you'll find up at the Abbey. She's never been there. Um, despite the fact that it's right above her and has basically existed above her for her entire life. We must look above and beyond to find our true selves shining in the light of the morning Lord. All hail, Lathander. 
maybe we're looking at this the wrong way. Maybe the trick to reviving anyone isn't the abbot himself, but something within the abbey. Well, we can sure hope that's true. I agree I, with you. Paul. I sure am hoping. I'm hoping too. Otherwise, we're leaving her at that altar of the sun, whatever. Yes. You will recall, um, each of you too, that in Madam Ava's uh, card reading, she mentioned to Paulton that he would find a woman in the Abbey of St. Markovia who would be helpful in the battle against Strahd. Oh, shit. Uh... Derpter, I'm Paulton. I need a higher lady. She's there. We should go. Wow, now the first thing normal Paulton said in a while is we're talking about a lady. <laughs> I mean, it, you could meet a woman there or not. I mean, it doesn't really matter because you have such great friends now here with you. So. Derpter, I want women. <laughs> The, uh, in fact, what, what Madam Ava said specifically uh, to Paulton was, a Vistana wanders this land alone, searching for her mentor. She does not stay in one place for long, but seek her out at St. Markovia's Abbey near the mists. Am I able to um, access Paulton's memories? Or That's a very good question. Um, in order even- to... I'm going to, if you want the spirit to, I don't know. Yeah. If you want to try, make a charisma check. Oh, or Jesus. rather, this is a charisma contest. Uh, <laughs> uh, against myself? Against Paulton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Right. So it's your charisma check. All right. And I'm sorry, what information are you trying to pry out of Paulton's mind subconscious? It's not important. Roll three. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you, you meet stiff resistance uh, from Paulton. All right. Well, that's fine. All right. So we're heading to this abbey to meet uh, a lady. Potentially. Okay. Assuming Madame Mavis not just jerking you around. Yeah. She was real sassy. Yeah. yeah. She said the F word to us. Yeah. <laughs> She did that. Um, <laughs> now, uh, by the time you arrive here, it's sort of uh, chugging on, on like into the evening. So the evening bell has rung uh, and is done. And now the Abbey is just sort of uh, kind of brooding in a growing darkness. Good. Who wants to knock, me or you? Now the question is, uh, what would you like to go up uh, now as night is falling? Or would you prefer to wait until the gray morning. Um, do I have any concerns knowing what I know about raising the dead on like another night going by? So um, there is sort of a, a timeline to raise the dead, but it's not a, a matter of days is not going to affect the situation. But here in this land, who knows? <laughs> But we also saw what happened to someone else who was raised here in the middle of the night. Hmm. Um, I mean, I'd just as soon go in. I'm, I'm not afraid of the dark because the light of the morning Lord protects me and shines upon me in all days of my life. But <laughs> if you guys would rather come back another time, that's all right. You're just saying that because your life isn't the one that's on the line. My oh. life is my friend's life. Oh, Paulson. That's okay. He's still being weird. Let's I, think, I think we should wait until morning. I, anything at night here is bad. Well, what are we going to do? Just camp out out front of the abbey, or no, go, go, go back? back? Go back down and stay with that nice woman and her horribly mutilated husband. Where's the safest place we can stash my body? Uh, so uh, right you, now, what? Yeah, <laughs> Anna, Anna Kreskova can put you up in the loft of her house. It's it's not the most roomy thing, but it fits all of you, including Arena. Um, now your horses can be tied off out back. Um, so you're all within the walls of Kresk, so wolves aren't going to come and steal you in the night. As for the, the wolf hunters, uh, they are quite happy to basically make camp you know, under a tree in the village somewhere. Well, have a good sleep under your tree. They are very disappointed that this village has no wine, however, so they're not convinced that they're going to stay here very long. 
everyone needs some wine. I mean, I don't really blame them. You can see them getting increasingly agitated and angry uh, just simply from wine deprivation. <laughs> <laughs> They become, more, they become more surly and uh, uh, in some respects, just you don't want to deal with them. Yeah. All right. Someone's got their grumpy pants on. Yep. Someone's got a case of the Mondays. <laughs> Every day is Monday in Barovia. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. oh, no. <laughs> the humanity. Right. I guess we'll wait till morning then. Yeah. All right. It's probably safest to wait till morning so long as we are able to properly protect ourselves yes. and more importantly, my body so that nothing happens or anyone accesses it or something. Well, Strix is just going to try and weekend at Bernie's it and just like drag him upstairs with her. No, let's be careful with the body. <laughs> yeah. All right. Gentle. Uh, th throughout the night, um, you are shocked by just how cold it gets here in Kresk. Uh, this this loft becomes very 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 chilly, and Paulton, you're like shivering, your teeth chattering, um, and uh, occasionally in the middle of the night you hear this sort of <laughs> sound from downstairs, and then you hear Anna consoling her husband, comforting him, bringing him like a bit of a little th thimble of soup or something that he can you know keep his throat moist and he seems to be absolutely miserable but she seems to be a trooper through and through just doesn't put on any sort of uh airs of getting of, of of being tired or fed up or anything she is she is totally on it and she does her utmost not to wake you but you can still hear her creaking and moving about that's a good life yeah it makes for sort of a one of those wake you're constantly being woken throughout the night kind of sleeps yeah uh. And so you wake up a little stiff, your neck, you know, cricks in your neck and in your bones, your elbows are sore uh, from lying on the wood. Um, and so you're not necessarily the happiest campers in the world. But morning comes. Ah. When you go outside, it's sort of misty, but it's not raining, which is nice. Good. All right. Time to go to the Abbey. You can see your breath, Strix, as you say that. <laughs> 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 yes, that's your soul escaping strength. <laughs> ah, she just put it back. <laughs> and you begin to uh, walk up the switchback road slash trail that leads up the sheer mountainside to where the abbey is perched on this basically ledge on the mountain spur. It's about 300 feet higher than the village. So oh. you're going up quite a hike. Yeah. And the road is sort of clinging to the edge of the cliff in a kind of precarious fashion. You wouldn't want to steer a wagon up here, for instance. That would be potentially calamitous. Um, now you can leave your horses down in the village if you like, or you could ride and or walk your horses up this trail. Your choice. I believe it's safer to leave the horses down here if it's this treacherous. A single misstep from them could send us all careening down. That's true. very wise of you, Paulton. <laughs> <laughs> Paulton's saying weird things. He's kind of just reminded me of Diaz, you know, just taking charge and coming up with all these good ideas. Just yeah. on up, Paulton. Yeah. You know what? Diaz has just been such a good influence on me. Isn't Diaz great, you guys? He also, he also, didn't, he also didn't complain once during the night about not having any alcohol. <laughs> that is strange now that you it. Strix is real. It's like, yeah. oh, what? <laughs> oh, no. I'm not in a drinking mood. I say aside said, to wait. Strix. <laughs> I he just said he's not in a drinking mood what? I, think, I think the death of Diath is just really affecting Paulton I think that he loved him even more than we thought it That's sure right. is affecting me I can certainly <laughs> say that um, now uh, Diath are you content to basically stay in your current host just asking for a friend uh, <laughs> for the time being yes okay. um, all right uh, Paulton's sort of given up on any effort to try to resist you. He's just sort of along for the ride at this point. <laughs> Damn right. And actually, you seem to be doing okay in his body, so he's not yeah. terribly concerned at this point either. Um, all right. So the switchback road that hugs the cliff um, uh, is made of loose gravel and chunks of broken rock. The ascent is slow, a little bit treacherous, and the air grows consistently colder as you reach the top. Now, when you get to the top... Um, the road uh, passes, when, when you get to, to where the actual level where the abbey is, 
the gravel road passes between two small stone outbuildings to either side of which stretches a five foot high, three foot thick wall of jumbled stones held together with mortar. It's, it's a wall you could practically just leap over, but it's more for decoration than anything, just sort of to hedge, to show the perimeter of the Abbey's estate. And these two uh, outbuildings between them, not really blocking the road, but kind of blocking the road, are iron gates on rusty hinges. Uh, they appear to be unlocked and slightly ajar. And they seem more for ornamentation than anything else. Uh, they're sort of decorated Gothic iron gates. Uh, viewed through the gates, the stone abbey stands quiet. It's two wings, which are really kind of like two separate buildings, one closer to you and one further back. Um, they are joined to one another by a 15 foot high stone curtain wall. So the building closest to you is two stories tall, basically square, with what appear to be stained glass windows set into its walls and a belfry that protrudes from the rooftop. The building that's a little bit that, uh, and then uh, the building that's a little bit further away from you is the bigger of the two buildings. It also appears to be two or two and a half stories uh, and appears to be more like a large residential building. Um, maybe like the hospice or the main part of the convent. It's like this one is probably the temple and the one further back is where people used to live or where the hospital used to be. Gotcha. Uh, these two buildings yeah. are separated and connected to each other by walls, which seem to house some sort of interior courtyard between them. You are outside of all of that. I don't think I'm giving too much away if I just sort of flash you the map. There's not much... Okay. Betray, but let me turn it on its side. So uh, <laughs> there we go. Okay, I see what you're so, Oh, so yeah, it's like a traditional. Yeah. Abbey. Okay. Right. So you're on the south part there, um, in the bot in the bottom right hand okay. corner. And that looks more like the temple area where the the temple the temple area appears to be the closer building with the trees yeah. around it. Gotcha. And then okay. there's a courtyard and then the further building back and then there's some sort of garden or something next to the residential building. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, you've got two outbuildings with iron gates between them that are slightly ajar and then a low wall uh, stretching off. Um, all seems quiet and silent. What do you do? We should definitely find some way to yeah. stash our good friend's... Uh, body there's no way we're gonna go in here with a body yeah you have got you are sort of slinging uh diath i'm gonna say uh for the sake of argument that arena is gonna stay down in the town below unless okay. you feel like you really want her she and should it's, stay safe it's probably yeah. safer for her down there just in case uh also uh in the morning it dawns on arena that the uh that uh burgomaster anna kreskova is going to have her hands full with some sort of childbirth. And so she's offered to look after Anna's husband. Oh, that's a good idea. Nice. What a right. nice lady. Yep. Arena is a sweetheart. Oh, we should All right. Well, sleep. where do you want to stash DS body? Cause I don't feel real comfortable just leaving it around. I mean, we don't have to stash it necessarily, but it's either we go in through the front door or we, and carrying it or we, stash it and sneak in why do we need to sneak why don't we just go we... talk to the abbot oh, god <sighs> okay okay evelyn let's just go talk what do you think paulton i think one of us should stay with the body just in case okay well we'll care we'll keep carrying the body then who Listen, volunteers or even just having one person out here with them so that while the rest of us go in and talk with the Abbott. We're not just busting down the doors and be like, oh, save me. We're just, we, uh, we kind of ease our way into it, you know? So you mean like split the party? <laughs> Let's not do that. I've heard that always goes really poorly. <laughs> uh, this conversation outside the gates seems to have aroused uh, some somebody or some creature in the outbuilding. Oh, great. One of the outbuildings. And you hear uh, this uh, 
weird donkey bray. Like sound of a braying donkey. <laughs> and then uh what's that? Ah. Uh hello? Something's wrong with that donkey. What the hell is going on in this place? And then peering out from behind the outbuilding on your right, uh you see this sort of squat kind of dwarf sized creature that looks like, uh, well, kind of looks like a beardless dwarf with patches of donkey flesh covering his face and body. He has one human ear and one wolf's ear and a protruding wolf's snout and fangs. His arms appear human, but his legs and feet are those of a lion and he has a donkey's tail. And he wears a sort of a heavy wool cloak. And you see he's, he comes around, he comes around, he's clutching a shovel have I ever seen anything like this before? <laughs> Have I ever seen anything like this before? Uh, no and no. Oh, and we're in bad news. I curtsy and say, hello, strange new acquaintance. My name uh, is he, Evelyn. He seems uh, just sort of freaked out um, and surprised and looks like he's half asleep. He sort of uh, doesn't have like you know how you kind of walk into things when you're half asleep he's kind of bumps into the corner a bit he doesn't seem on top of his game uh, you can see coming out of the other outbuilding is another figure also pretty short uh, the left side of her face or his face you can't tell uh, is covered with lizard scales uh, the other half has gray wolf fur um, you can see between these tufts is pale human skin one of its eyes is that of a cat and her fingers and hands resemble cat's paws with opposable thumbs. And uh, she's also wearing a gray cloak. And she says in a little bit more articulate common, ah, who are you? Who are you? Well, I am Is Eva that Mar a body? Uh, you, you, might, you might call that a body. We can uh, bury it for you. Yeah. Oh, you. No, Hold thank up. you. Oh, grave diggers. Hi. Just so I've seen you... Uh, Totally get your kind. And That's right. We're grave diggers. Right. You're doing a great job. I'm uh, Sig Freck. Hi. Hello. My name's Strix. This is Otto. Hi, Otto. <laughs> Say something. Hey, cute, cute, little, cute little Burke there. You cute little fuzzy. I'm like pinching. It's like, hey, I'm going to pinch your cheeks. You're real cute. I really like you guys. Uh, can you tell us uh, where the abbot is? We just want to talk to him. It's, you know, just... Oh, great. Um, cool. Probably in the temple. <laughs> Could you possibly uh, leave us alone? Just, you know. Uh, she'll come over and she she just got this weird kind of lumber. Oh, God. And she just comes over and grabs the gates and pulls them open. And she says, come on in. Come on in. <sighs> I curse well, you. the body for you. Nope. Oh. Nope. Don't touch the body. Nope. This is our, this is our crusty, nasty. It's more like a burrito. Just don't worry about it. Thank you, though. Here. I take out the loaf of bread in my robes. And I'm like, you guys want a snacky, snickety snook? <laughs> And then she sort of. The thing I ever heard you say, Strix. <laughs> Shut up, Stickety Snook. She says, Stickety Snook. <laughs> I give it to her. And I'm like, yeah. She'll take it. Um, and you can see she and Otto begin to fight over it. Oh no, no, I've got more. I pull out the the pork and give it to to Otto. No, you can share. It's okay. Otto says, I'm smart. Yes, you are. <laughs> You're very smart. And fast. That's good that you're fast. Wow, you understand him real well, sir. Yes, Evelyn, I have a lot of experience in this department. And strong. <laughs> yes, you are. If you're fast and strong, uh, please make sure to be nice to us, because if you're nice to us later, in case you decide you don't like us, I've got plenty more sickety snooks in my yes. robes. Sick Frag slaps him and goes, yes, be nice, be nice. <laughs> Lots of stickity snooks. Stickity snooks. <laughs> Don't worry, we've got friends, said Evelyn. All right, uh, they seem pretty harmless, uh, and they don't. I seem, like them. They don't seem to interfere with you one iota, uh, and they'll pretty much uh, let you pass. Or you know, if they if you need help with something, they're happy to help you. Uh, you notice immediately to your right, there are graves uh, set into the snowy ground, and it looks like they're quite old. Just rows of them. 
Some of the gravestones are a little bit tipped by the, the shifting of the earth. Others are, seem to be cracked or split and crumbling a bit uh, from age or weather worn. I uh, like whisper blessings at them as I walk by. Make a perception check. You're just yeah. like, Evelyn, you can't bless all of the graves. Do you will be in the ground before this is over? We got places to be. Uh, not very good. I think that's like a l- 10. Okay. Uh, you can see, uh, while well, a lot of the names are sort of worn, you other blessings, you can see at least a couple names. Uh, one says Brother Valen. Another says Sister Constance. Valen uh, and Constance. Yeah. Blessed uh, be thee in the light of the morning, Lord. Right. All right. Enter the Abbey. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so you've still got the body. Yes. Uh, just for uh, giggles, who's carrying it? Probably me. Okay. Right? Yeah, probably. You're the strongest. Sparks can't carry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Her pockets are so laden down with like dead Sneaky. moths and food. It's just sort of like... Dalton okay. can help if need be. It's all right, Palton. I got this. Don't worry. Good. Okay. The path from the... Uh, from the outbuildings, uh, and you can see uh, Zigfreck and Otto just sort of staring at you, kind of standing in the gateway, kind of looking at you awkwardly as you walk away from them, uh, and uh, they wave. Um, you can <laughs> wave back. The path uh, continues all the way around the abbey to what appear to be the gardens at the far end, uh, and there's another outbuilding uh, the entrance to the gardens but the main entrance is about halfway along this path and it seems to be uh, a uh, 10 foot tall wooden doors reinforced with bands of steel set into the wall which you assume leads into the courtyard Uh, to the right of the doors mounted on the wall is a tarnished copper plaque uh, upon which is the Abbey's name, the Abbey of St. Markovia, with the following words underneath it, may her light cure all illness. I like lovingly touch that plaque and I'm like, okay. yes, the light of the morning Lord flow through us all. Strix and Paulton, you see on the top of the wall, there are battlements and there are guards uh, staring down at you. They don't move. Make perception checks, everybody. Oh. Uh, got a two. 16. You got a two? I was too busy waving at Otto and then the yeah. other cat thing. I was like, snickety snooks! <laughs> With an 18, Paulton, uh, you can see that the quote unquote guards actually appear to be propped up scarecrows that wear corroded chain shirts and clutch rusty spears. They seem to be kind of mounted to some sort of uh, brace or something. So they're just standing there, clearly not living guards. Uh huh. Did they get you? I bet they got you. What? No, totally didn't get, get me. No. <laughs> I want to pick up a rock and throw one at them. <laughs> All right. Yes. You make a attack roll. This is just a, Add uh, your proficiency bonus, which is plus two, and your your uh, dexterity bonus. Nice. I actually got a twenty-two. All right. Yeah. <laughs> you just, <laughs> you've never been more determined to throw. Uh, <laughs> yes. You hit this one of the guards right in the face. It's sort of a sackcloth face, and it, it just sort of tears his whole head down. Um, <laughs> just sort of knocks it clean back, and it just sort of snaps back. Poor workmanship. Let's well done, inside. Strix. You have vanquished your most stalwart foe. Uh, and and he's, he was probably wearing like a little sort of saucer helmet. And so that got knocked off. And you can sort of hear it clatter down onto cobblestones over the wall. Just a clang, 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 I might have made some noise. Why don't we just knock on the door now? I knock with flourish. All right. Boom, <clears throat> boom, boom, boom. Uh, you hear on the, on the other side of the doors in the courtyard what sounds like flapping wings, but you get no response. Are they bat wings? Yes. Oh, God. 
You don't like that? They, I'm not even going to explain it anymore. Yeah, sure, Evelyn. <laughs> Uh, you Have immediately, you Strix, believe, you're convinced that whatever lies inside this courtyard or beyond this courtyard, if it's not a dragon, it's probably like the biggest giant bat you've ever heard. It's just that loud. Evelyn, Alton, there is a large, extremely large winged creature behind this wall. It's either a bat or it's a dragon or it's a bat dragon or it's a bat dragon person. I don't know. So we should either go around, find a different way in here. Or probably die. I mean, we could all just die. Like it's. I just as she's talking, I I'm like looking at her, like uh huh, uh huh. But I'm like rising with my wing boots. No, 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 no. no. I go no. peek over the the. I'm just gonna get a little look see over the wall. Absolutely, uh, you can see as you rise up next to a headless scarecrow, and you can see uh, over the curtain wall um, beyond the little stone platform that the guards can actually stand on. Uh, this curtain wall, by the way, goes, it forms a complete loop around the courtyard and there are entrances to the second floors of each building from this rooftop, from this parapet that you are now hovering next to. Uh, but when you look down in the courtyard, you can see thick, thick fog swirling down there as if eager to escape uh, the uh, sort of trapped by the 15 foot high curtain walls. Uh, you can also see the source of the flapping noise. In one corner of the courtyard, there are old tethering posts that were used for horses. Well, a creature has been basically chained to one of them. Uh, and it appears to be like the two creatures you just met, some sort of mongrel, mongoloid thing, but it's got bat wings. And it's like flapping furiously in a panic, probably at the sound of the banging on the door. Um, trying to escape and it sort of reaches the end of its chain like it's trying to fly off but it can't uh like a dog How big is it uh it's about dwarf sized uh, but its wings make it look bigger and the reason it sounded so loud from the outside is because the sound gets a little bit trapped inside the courtyard and just enhances everything mm -hmm. in the courtyard mm -hmm. would seem louder um so this panic creature doesn't seem to be paying any particular attention to you at all. It just wants to get untethered and fly away. Um, at least that's the, what you get out of it. Uh, you can see at ground level inside the courtyard, uh, there is a stone well in the middle fitted with an iron winch to which a rope and a bucket are attached. The well is just sort of open and drops down into darkness. Along the perimeter, Tucked under the overhanging wall are several stone sheds with padlocked wooden doors, as well as three shallow alcoves that contain wooden horse troughs. Uh, there are the wooden posts that I described earlier, and then uh, you can see doors on the ground floor leading both into the residential building and into what you assume to be the temple building. Hmm. I say, are you all right down there? Let's see. <laughs> uh, I yell down, it's Strix, don't worry, it's not a dragon bat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you hear it shout, ah, this is the worst place ever. <laughs> Why? Why is it so bad? Free me. Free me. All right, just a second. Just a second. Says, Free me before my enemies come and kill me. Uh, I float back down real quick to tell Strix and Paulton. You can all hear this voice now emanating from the courtyard. And it says, they're everywhere. Everywhere. Who? Who are everywhere? Enemies. They're watching me. They're watching me all the time. Do I? That mist you said was trapped in there? Does it look just like weather mist or does it look suspicious? Okay. No, just weather mist. Okay. okay. So I just like if I would obviously drop, needs help now that we know he's not to just drop over the other side of the wall. Ah, like, oh. Don't go away. I'm still trapped here. <laughs> oh, no, I, I mean, like you want a snook? Yeah. Yeah. He wants a snickety snook. Um, so here, like, here's the wall. I'm like, boop, boop. if yeah. I go over it and down and then yeah. try to open the door from the inside. Yeah, Can you let yeah. us in? Okay. Absolutely. A second, be right back. Yeah, and a few I like months later, Strix and Paulton, you're standing in front of the doors as they part in front of you, and there is Evelyn standing on the inside of the courtyard, and the mist starts to billow out past her, past your feet. I play with it. Ooh. Yeah. Oh god, don't touch it. <laughs> 
Strix, there's another one of your friends probably wants to snickety snook right over there. Yeah, well, you, you guys can see through the mist this bat-like monstrosity. It's only she, she or it or whatever. It's only about four feet, five inches tall, has sort of a hunched posture. Long, stringy black hair hides most of her face. Ugh. Clearly visible are spider mandibles uh, and teeth replacing what appear what would normally be a normal human mouth. Uh, her arms and wings are basically the same. Uh, they are all this sort of bat-like leathery structure. And you can see she has a cloven hoof in place of her right foot. Strix is going to walk up to her and just, uh, she really does have pity for these creatures. And she's kind of just like, who did this to you? Why? Why? All right. Uh, when you approach, it attacks you. Oh, great. Strix tried to be all nice. Yes. All right. Uh, with with uh, spider jaws. Uh, Great. This creature lunges at you. Um, no, last time I'm going to try and be nice. <laughs> uh, and uh, But misjudges, it sort of got entangled um, as it spun around the post. And uh, it snaps about a foot short of you and uh, nearly gets knocked. Yeah. And then it just sort of flaps its wings and tries to get at you. I'm so like, ah! ah! <laughs> And you can see any sort of humanity that you thought this creature might have. Um, it's just absent now. Did Dunn try to trick you? I don't think we're going to let this one go. Well, I mean, it did look like he was in trouble. I feel bad for it, but if it also could just be a further menace upon everything. Why are you doing that? Why are you trying to attack her? And then she says, my brother will kill you. Why? Who's your brother, more importantly? You're the enemy. You want to destroy us. No, we don't want to destroy you at all. Look at you. You're not one of us. Oh, please. Strix, like, pulls her hood off and is just like, come on. (laughs) (laughs) Did they react to Strix? Uh, This creature that you're dealing with seems to be absolutely insane. Hmm. Well, I do appreciate the situation you're in, and I wish I could help you, but unfortunately, I think you'd be a danger to yourself. Bong. If you up. Bong. Bad. Ah. Bong. Bad. I don't know what that is. Bong. Do we run? It's do we bad. Run? You turn up. You all see this, this bell ringing coming from the belfry to your right from the temple. Uh, and as soon as it starts ringing and you start to get a little bit jittery, from the residential building on the other side of the um, courtyard comes this cacophony of screams and yells, all saying, food, 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 food. I love food. I love food. And what? Coming, coming, from the sh- coming from the sheds in the courtyard, more screaming for food. Oh, we have to hide. Uh, there's all kinds of experiments going on here, and this is weird, and I don't like it. I think we should hide. I'm not allowed to run, though. We know what happened last time. <laughs> there are two uh, closed gatehouses on either side of the entrance that you guys came through. They appear to be um, just sort of quiet, safe places to hide. You don't think you'd want to hide out in any of the sheds. Uh, you could also overturn a horse trough and try to hide under one of those. That sounds like my kind of hiding place. <laughs> I still have. I try to overturn the horse trough and hide under that. Right. Strix. I want to go in one of the guard houses. All right. Oh, I leave that... us, Evelyn. There's, I all, to mention, there's, also, there's also the open well. I forgot to mention that. Oh, mm. that's, that's too spooky for me. There's also a DF that we should probably take care of, too. Let's not forget about that guy. Yeah, I'll I drive DF fun. underneath the trough with me. I already took it into the, the oh, guard house. Okay, great. All right. Yeah. There's like a brief moment when Strix and Evelyn both reach for opposite ends of DF trying to go in a different direction. No, stop! But Strix realizes she's not going to win that war. And then... <laughs> so Strix goes tumbling up behind a horse trough and pulls it over her head, completely covering herself. And then Evelyn ducks into one of the little guard houses and p- drags DF in with her. Yeah. Uh, Paul I prop him awkwardly because he's like yes. wrapped in this blanket, so right. it's kind of like a carpet. So I like yes. to sit him down, but he kind of like <laughs> awkwardly bends in the middle. Like, oh God! Yeah. Right. All right, uh, uh, Paulton, what do you do? Uh, <laughs> I'm checking what he can do. I don't understand any of this. Uh, I'll, I'll go to the well and. 
kind of like leap into it and just kind of hang on to the edge on the inside. Very good. Or, uh, or like, or I put my hand on either side to pull myself up. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, you have no trouble sort of uh, leaping into the well and kind of finding purchase there. Good, good, good. good. Um, and you can actually either brace yourself on opposites like like this with your hands and feet sort of on opposite sides of the well interior, or the it's not like a perfectly smooth well. It's very, very old and kind of ragged. So there are lots of grab holds and things like that, protruding okay. stone, things like that. And so, yes, you hide out in the well. Yeah, so long as I have my hands like on the inside down yeah. below, grabbing on the side. Right. Um, and yes, and it's very dark down there. You're not exactly sure how well, how deep the well is, but make a perception check because the sound might give you a clue. Okay, and this Dolphin's is- gonna be so mad. And this is DF's perception. That is correct. Okay. Uh, 17. All right. You would estimate based on the reverberations of sound coming back up at you that the well is about 70 or maybe 80 feet deep. Nope. Not going down. Never you enough. Also, you also realize you're not alone. Oh, oh God. <laughs> and that's where we'll stop for the <laughs> 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 You tickled Jared real good. <laughs> just, Nate's going to come back and be like, what? <laughs> He's going to be so upset. <laughs> All right. That's funny. Yes, indeed. So, Anna, you've got your Miss Clicks game tonight? Yes. And Excellent. we. this has been a crazy few weeks of D&D because &D, we actually had a character die. Yeah. And uh, our DM... Now let him, we, we were fighting an undead skeleton cleric that we found in the dungeon and one of our members managed to convince that undead skeleton cleric to join us instead of kill us. So that now that's our new character. So nice. we're setting sail on a ghost ship today, I think. Woo! So that's a, come join awesome. us. It's a ghosty good time for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. So just to recap, uh, because of uh, Memorial Day week events and uh, a DD. and d a huge event at Meltdown Comics in LA uh, next Wednesday. Uh, I will be out of town most of the week. And so no dice camera action next week. We'll pick up on the following week. Next um, June 7th is our return. E that sounds right. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, and, and the wackiness in the Abbey will continue. Oh, man. Yay. Let's all go get some snooky snooks. Snickety snooks. Snickety snooks is the word of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I actually say that to my birds. I'm just like, <laughs> yes. And so you guys have had your first encounters with mongrel folk. Oh, that's They're what so they're cute. Yeah, I love them. <laughs> I feel really bad for them, but I'm not going to hug them like I tried. <laughs> some, of, some of them are more huggable than others. That's good. <laughs> yeah. You know what they remind me of is the like goblins in the original Sleeping Beauty animated. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's like, oh, we searched every cradle. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a few good ones in here. I think you're gonna meet several more. Good. Oh, good. Very. We can keep them around. They're fine. <laughs> yes. All right, and and. Uh, Thanks for being a ghost. <laughs> no problem. I can honestly say I've never done that before. So that's fun. Yes. All right. Uh, so, you know, um, this is, I have no other announcements other than the Meltdown Comics thing. Do any of you guys have any announcements or stuff coming up that you want to share with the greater folk? Um, I'll be at MomoCon this weekend. If any cool. of you guys can be there. Sorry, where's that? Momocons in Atlanta, Georgia, all, all right. Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. In June, I'm going to uh, Supernova in Perth, Australia. So if there's any Australia, oh, oh. <laughs> um, yeah. So that'll that'll be coming up. But hopefully, I can still D and D. It'll just be at like God only knows what time. They have to make a faster plane before I'd be willing to entertain. Oh, them. it's real bad. It's like <laughs> the other side of the planet. Yeah. 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 Yep. That's harsh. Hashtag drinking. <laughs> after, after, yeah, after a six-hour flight to London, I'm just ready to murder everybody on. The <laughs> I, I can't imagine being on a plane to Perth, Australia. It's, I'm, yeah, I'm flying rough. to Taiwan on Friday, so similar Whoa. flight. Yeah, that's far too. Yeah, thirteen-hour one. Yeah, Oof. but actually, I do have something. Um, Roll twenty con is June third. 
No, that's before. Yeah, that's right. Because I yeah. told them I was going to come to that too. Yes. Uh, and I'm actually the host of it. With It's an online oh, convention. Yeah. I'm going to be participating in an event for it. Yeah. Oh. In fact, I think our whole crew was invited if we want to all be involved. So I'll, I'll chat with you guys more afterwards. Okay. But, um, That's June 3rd, you said? Yeah. That's the fr so, next Friday. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be really, really fun. It's 24 hours of live role playing and talking about role playing and tabletop gaming and all sorts of fun stuff. So really, really cool. I'm excited about it. Yeah, I'll be in a game. I think it starts at two that mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be one of those days because I'll just be flying back from L.A. the same day. So. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in that same game with you as far as I know. Oh, great. I think I am, too. Yeah, I think oh, you yeah. are. All right. Very Hooray. good. Hooray. Hooray. You're invited. So if you want to be you in that too, game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm playing, but it'll be fun. I've um, been told you have an email about it. Okay. So. I'll have to go through and find it. Or send me another one. Okay. Well, yeah, right. so that'll be really fun since we don't have an, an episode that week. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, bathroom break time. <laughs> yeah, see you guys.